Good evening, folks. Welcome to a Celtic Fans TV Transfer Deadline Day special. We are live here on YouTube. I'm joined tonight by Callum and Declan to go over all of today's deals, uh, incomings, outgoings, and all of the transfer window so far. Um, this is the live format. As you know, you can ask your questions in the live chat box below, and you can ask super chats as well. Um, if you want to really have a question answered, you can pin it to the top of the chat, and we'll get to it when we can. Um, boys, I want to start tonight. The overhyped, the often overhyped deadline day. Um, have we got a favourite? Declan, is there one that stands out? I'm sure there is at least one. Uh, I would have to go back to him as a wee ten year old guy and getting sent to my bed early, even though I was buzzing about Robbie Keane signing for Celtic and uh, <laughs> getting allowed to stay up till eleven o'clock. He was the announced, so getting chased up to my bed um, for primary five that would be, and then getting up the next <laughs> morning to see uh, Robbie had signed for the hoops. So. That was a good window. I was looking back on that. We also signed uh, maybe the less influential Diamante Camera, uh, Edson Braffide and Slaney as well in that window. So uh, exactly. the January transfer window 2010 was a belter just for at least the banter with Slaney and Kino. As a blockbuster, uh, Callum, is that your standout? Oh, Declan just stole my thunder. It was all Paul Slane. I know. Oh, no, it's not I really. Know. Um, that was, it, was, it, was, uh, it was Robbie Keane, 1st of February, 2010. Somebody that had went and played for the likes of Inter Milan, Liverpool, Leeds, Tottenham. Just And he was only age 30 as well, so he was still in his fairly prime. And the, how he had managed to get him um, was beyond belief. Um, unlike Declan, I must be just a little bit older than Declan because uh, mm. I was uh, doing at the stadium, pouring rain, it was announced dead late, um, and he even got fans player of the year that uh, that year as well. And he only made sixteen yeah. appearances, twelve goals, but he was just somebody that was, and for my opinion, was just I was an order of the guy thinking how we managed to pull somebody that's mm -hmm. the prem, one of the Premier League's best ever strikers, um, and we'd managed to get him. So, aye, that's that's my one now. I think that's everybody's. Um, it's mine as well. Um, I remember when he signed, and I remember the next day because his debut was against Kilmarnock at Rugby Park. I think the very next day. I think I was, it must have been about 14, 15. Mad clamour to get tickets. We went through in the back of my mate Citroen Saxo, crammed into it. Um, and I, we could beat 1 0, didn't we? Um, <laughs> I think that sums up that about sums up how good that season was, didn't it? I think and then the, 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 the uh, following Sunday was a Scottish Cup game because I remember going to it. My dad get tickets because it was my birthday, the day before my birthday. So that would have been 10th birthday. So I was nine when Keane signed the yeah. week after yeah. turn 10. And uh, we went down to one at Dunfermline and it took Keno to come on and score a hat trick, scored the penalty. Uh -huh. And that was the first I time we scored the, the roly poly and the wee bang uh -huh. bang. Uh -huh. the wee, the wee celebration, wee gun <laughs> A few weeks later, I think the, the round after that, we went back to Rugby Park in the cup and he got a hat trick. Was, anyway, um, to, the, to the big story from today, uh, Roddy Early is saying, What's your thoughts on Laxal? Diego Laxal is. On the brink, it looks like, of a season-long loan deal from AC Milan. Uh, I think there's still negotiations happening over an option to buy. But, Callum, um, is this the left-back solution that you think Celtic have been looking for? Um, I hope so. I hope he's the answer. I'm not going to sit here and lie to everybody and say that I know tons and tons about him. Um, I don't know too much about him. Um, so I looked at his stats a little bit. Um, he's played a lot of games in the Italian league. Played over 110 appearances for Genoa. Uh, he's played for Milan, 24 appearances, Torino, 16, and he's he's been capped 24 times for his nation, Uruguay. So he's obviously got a very good pedigree about him. Um, he's only 27 years of age, I believe. Um, so he's a very good age that Celtic are getting him at. Mm. Um, so I believe that he's um, going to be better than what we have in that position. I, I fully believe that's the position that he's usually playing in that wing-back role. So he suits Celtic um, down to a tee. I say he's coming from a very good standard of football in the Italian league that's much better than the, the SPL. Um, so for me, it's, it's a very good signing to uh, pick off a very good window for Celtic. Aye, Declan, you can tell with the, the sort of names we've been linked to. Um, Mattia De Chilio as well for, for Juventus the, the other day there. Ryan Sessegnon for Tottenham. The club were obviously intent on bringing in real quality in that area. Yeah, um, really ambitious signing, get them in and loan. Laxell, uh, Session Young going to Hoffenheim shows the, the quality of talent we were looking at. Um, I know there's still possibly a deal there for the boy uh, Dohi, 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 is he? Dohi for, for Charlton, yeah. Uh, possibly in January, uh, but I think to, to go and get a, a Uruguayan internationalist on loan 
uh, as a real good uh, end to our transfer business and it shows a, an ambitious uh, pedigree that we've had throughout this window we've, we've seen players that have walked into our first team I wouldn't really say we've I mean we saw at the beginning of this year in January we signed obviously as Malia Soro and Patrick Clamala who at that point in time were not players walking into our first team um, they still don't walk into our first team as much as Clamala's goal was excellent yesterday he's not going to be a, a stick on whereas this window Duffy, Ayeti, uh, Laxal and, and Barkas obviously have been really good signings and Ellen who said that uh, walk right into your first team so it's showed real desire pedigree from the club and um, I think that needs to be uh, compliment, uh, given praise tonight because uh, you know we've kept a hold of all our big assets and I think we've done really good business Aye, absolutely. I think you can tell, as I say, that the intent for the club this summer has been very, very good and we'll come to um, keeping hold of the key players a little bit later on. Callum, for, from what you've seen uh, of Laxal, do you think, I mean, I think he looks quick, he looks very good going forward and by all accounts he's versatile as well, so he can play a number of positions, um, both at, at full-back and uh, further forward. So one of the criticisms of Greg Taylor is maybe that, that sort of attacking edge that he's, he's maybe lacking, so... Yank Laxal looks like he's going to really improve, isn't that area? Oh, massively. That's been my biggest criticism uh, of Taylor over the last couple of months is he's just not got confidence. You can see it. He's not got the confidence to go on and beat a man. I don't know if you noticed in the game uh, yesterday, um, I think it was the 75th minute, still 0-0, and he actually gets the ball down to him and he tries to like, flick it by the boy and run by him and he just has no energy and the boy just sticks mm-hmm. his back into him. No, you're not getting by me. And all of a sudden, then he actually steps back and goes, all right, I've lost the ball and I'll need to defend. You'll not get that Laxall, I think you, as you said, he's very pacey on, on that wing. Um, he's somebody that can cover that side up and down. Um, he'll the appearances that he's had at all the clubs that he's been in in Italy, he's he's going to slot into Celtic same team. And as Declan uh, said, he's not somebody that's coming in to com- uh, compete with Taylor. He's somebody to actually come in and take that first spot. We've been searching for a, a left back slash left wing back all summer. And it's taken to the very last day. Hopefully that he gets over the line because if something was to go wrong, we would be in massive trouble because we've only got one actual left back at the club. So I think it's a very good signing and uh, I hope he hits the ground running. Hmm. Declan, if we know anything about Celtic, uh, the announcement will be kept to the last minute. I'd like to keep us hanging. Um, especially everybody usually fires their notifications on and you get a DVD popping up. Uh, <laughs> I thought it was quite good. And I've just saw a nice uh, message just popped up there, Jack H. Just in thank the fans. Right. So uh, I think they like to tease us a wee bit, but I imagine the deal will get over the line. And um, I think everybody will be chuffed when he comes in. But I'm sure that will be for a wee while yet before it's announced. How, how many, we'll do a sweepstake, how many tweets is the Celtic FC account going to have before it uh, <laughs> announces them later? It's at least an hour, two or three, four isn't or it? Aye. Maybe, three, four, or maybe three or four, four or five, I think, maybe. I think just drop a bit, maybe we on this day. Sorry, we've got Bobo's birthday as well. That was fired out early as well. So the nice. delighted teases. Well, we can through through the archives looking for any more birthdays, wouldn't we? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> then I think you can tell. I think you can tell the age. Obviously, twenty-seven lacks how the profile of signing that we've made this summer, allied with the fact that we have kept hold of all of the key players, despite the fact we never made the Champions League, does look like the board of uh, they're taking this opportunity at history seriously and rightly so yes I think we were maybe worried you know the club has lost a lot of money during this pandemic uh, that will have to be recouped back eventually but they obviously knew that in this season of all seasons it, it, they just couldn't afford to take the risk of trying to recoup money so I, I think praise has to go to Chris McKay and Peter Lowell for, for managing the finances the way in which the fans would like it to be managed in terms of getting loads of good players in and making sure nobody goes out. So uh, tonight, or no, I, I would say well done to Chris and, and Peter for mm. getting uh, the job done, how we would all like it to be done. Mm. Callum, I think cynically you could say that we should see a lot more transfer windows like this. Um, I think the club do deserve credit, huge credit, particularly if we do get to this, this deadline closing and we've got Lacks out and, and we've kept a hold of all of the key players. Um, there's no doubt they deserve huge credit for the business we've done this summer. I de- definitely, especially obviously with the situation that we find ourselves in. If somebody was to tell you a year ago that a massive pandemic was going to happen and Celtic would spend 15 million during the pandemic, 
You wouldn't believe him. I, I wouldn't believe him. And no selling day. And no selling day. No, like one of the big guns go, your uh, Edwards, Isles, people like that, and even paying a, like a two million loan fee. It's just madness. Celtic don't do that normally. So you can clearly see that the board are on the same side this season as the fans of the intent of what they want to do. Declan says he covered it. They'll recoup that money next year. People like Ayer will go, Edward will go, maybe McGregor. They'll recoup and they'll get lots of money in for it. So they've been smart um, on this window. This probably has been the best window and at least easier the past 10 years for Celtic because every player that we have signed this window walks straight into that team. Apart from probably one, which is Turnbull. Turnbull, um, he's just a work in progress, but he's somebody for the future. But he can also play, you'll get to 15 to 20 games a season as well. So apart from that, everybody else walks into that team for me. Hmm. Declan, I think one of the things I've found really strange this summer is, all things considered, we haven't heard too many rumours about players being linked away. Um, OK, there's there's been some heads turned, if you like, but... There's never been any concrete rumours, um, any concrete bids, if you like, and, and that's pleasantly surprising. It's pleasantly surprising. I don't know if it's just due to the circumstances we find in that maybe people don't want to take the the, the chance and, you know, a, a Scottish player uh, and spend big money because certainly for guys that were thinking, you know, could be linked away, Ayer, Edward and then Cham, it was big money. And uh, maybe some clubs would have thought they were taking a risk paying the big money so whether well, that's the reason why I don't know uh, but to go out the Champions League that was obviously the worry when we were out the Champions League to Ferenc Varos that you'd maybe have a player that would want to go because again miss out in that money but to have kept everybody in the building is testament to the club which uh, good on them I absolutely Callum I think um, Christopher Ayer Ryan Christie um, and Odson Edwards as well are probably the three that have been most linked with moves away. I think the the IRT C Milan stuff, obviously if there's another deal coming um the opposite way from AC Milan, then I think the the nail's in the coffin for that one. I don't think there's there's anything happening with Christopher Ayer. Do you think the the, the players have been impacted in any way oh. by the sort of murmurings about their future? Aye, because every single Celtic fan is looking at Edward right now. And just he's not the same player. Um, at the start of the season, he, he just picked that form up from when we uh, left off, and um, he's, he's he started the season brilliantly. And now the the rumours are maybe Arsenal. That agent had come out and says, look, there could be something in that. Arsenal were looking at him. The possibility of Lacazette had maybe been sold. Um, so I think that got his head turned a little bit. And even you've seen it with the likes of Morelos as well when. Oh, apparently Leo had came in, his head was turned and he never really played and he was dropped, well, we just couldn't afford to drop him, Edward, because he's, he's too key to us, but yesterday you seen him hooked at 60 minutes because he, he simply just, his head wasn't there. Then um, As soon as the window closes, it's, it's they know they're at least here to Christmas. So they know they need to get the head down and they're as well as just working for it. Um, so it'll make the time go by much, quick, uh, much quicker for them. So hopefully, we, fingers crossed, as Declan says, we've not sold anybody, but it wouldn't surprise me we are aboard to be fair, if they did want to go and just whoop and just go and sell somebody, it wouldn't surprise me. But hopefully, hopefully, fingers crossed, they don't. And right now, we are definitely stronger at the end of this window than mm. the moving into it. Aye, we're nearly there, mate. We're nearly there. We've only got a couple more hours to <laughs> nearly, hold on. Nearly. Um, Matthew Miller is asking, we need a centre half, surely. Um, Declan, is that maybe the other area of the team that you think we could do a, a little bit more depth in? Possibly. Um, even last season, obviously, Jozo left this summer. With Jozo there, before we signed Duffy, I thought we still needed to improve in that position just for even cover's sake. But we brought Duffy in. You know, He's a better player than I mean, Jozo Simonovic, but I still think we're a bit light, especially if we're going to go with a back three. Um, people would maybe call it the cheap option, but the manager seems to have faith in El Hamed and Beaton getting there as cover, so, so be it. But uh, it would have been a position I'd have liked. But I'm not going to dwell on that. If I think we did good business, and uh, if that is a bridge we need to cross, then so be it. But hopefully, if we can just keep the guys fit, Julian still to come back into the team. I've seen Beaton and Elhamid operate in there. Beside Ayer and Duffy, I think we should be okay. I I think fitness is just a big thing for me. We've seen Julian out with that back injury recently, and that first choice back to you, if you like, haven't played together uh, very much at all so far. So if if they can stay fit. I think we'll be fine in that area. But as you say, if, if suspensions or injuries start to pick up, um, we're going to have to rely on, on Beaton and El Ahmed to, to come in and, and cover. 
Uh, by the way, Celtic have tweeted again um, about the four games that have been rescheduled due to the Europa League uh, <laughs> one. fixtures. So that's one. Uh, we've only been going about 10, 15 minutes here. Um, Callum, do you think, obviously, centre half, we will link with Mark McKenzie uh, for the MLS. Do you think the club are just content with Beaton and, and El Ahmed covering as Declan says in there? Uh, yeah. See, when you put it actually on paper, we've got six centre backs at the club. But when that's caused you, because you have, uh, remember, young Welsh, he's still there as well, that got some game time last season. So um, you've obviously got the, the three main, Julian, Ayer, Duffy, and then you have the spare of El Hamad, Beaton, and Welsh. So you've, you've got two players for every position. In a sense, if you're playing that three at the back, you can swap the first three out and bring another three in. So that's probably what he's thought. Um, or Neil Lennon's been told, look, you can only get one player. Do you want another centre back or do you want a, a, a left wing back? Because as I say, we have spent a lot of money. Even even you look at the a Yeti deal, that wasn't actually for money. That was for a loan deal. And Celtic actually went, you know what? No, nah, we'll pay we'll pay the money up front now and we'll take it. That's not like Celtic to do that when they get offered a loan deal. Yeah. Brilliant. That so deal even this was season, a, so that deal was nearly dead in the water, by the way, from a a good mm-hmm. source. I mean, that deal was it was gone, and the manager again did intervene. I know that by record to get that deal over the line and the club made sure without Neil Lennon getting involved in that deal it was to done and again no it's not just 5 million because the wages I get he comes with exactly. the bonuses he'll come with you know it's a lot of money to spend but as you're saying Callum mm-hmm. that was really done well I think that deal mm-hmm. I, I, don't, I don't think the board got enough credit for that because when we know the board and his funds are tight um, etc you know getting fans into European games where we're probably Probably not going to have a European package this year. It's a lot of money that the club are going to miss out on. But yet, they've spent the most money in the last decade on this mm. with the pandemic. So, they deserve a lot of praise um, for what they have done, um, I, I believe. Um, but th- that's probably what he was offered. He was offered, look, we're really stretched as it is. You can only really get one or two in. and It can only really be one key player because Laxal is going to come and he's probably going to be paid quite a good wage anyway and we're going to need to cover I'd, I'd guess at least 40-50% of that wage whatever he's on at Milan so it's, it is a lot of money so I think that's what he was offered but he's probably looked at it and mm. seen six centre-backs at the club and thought he's alright in that position um, and we'll just go for somebody at wing-back Yeah, the, the big thing for me is net spend as well as I say, keep my hold of mm-hmm. the key players while spending that money um, it's, it's a double positive if you like mm-hmm. Declan, we've seen some outgoings today we've already uh, joked about the Celtic Twitter feed Jack Aitchison has left permanently to, to Barnsley on a three-year deal. Celtic's youngest ever scorer. Um, I kind of expected that he would go on loan. I feel like there's maybe some some uh, growth and development in him but still at Celtic, but um, he's obviously decided that it's best for him to make a permanent move. Good luck to him. I thought he would never go on loan because he did have a wee kick. He, kick, he kicked on for his green quite a bit, um, but Lennon just obviously doesn't see part of the plans and the fact we've brought in strikers and Ayeti and, and Klamala just signals that you know he was never anywhere near the first team so good luck to him but um, it is what it is mm. Callum another uh, stalwart that left the other day there um, a Brendan Rodgers superstar <laughs> signing couldn't, couldn't I bend you what are we going to do with him oh do you know actually i seen him um Sam for East Bride, I seen him play East Bride, he scored a free kick and I thought, this, cat, this guy's a wonder, here we go. So I, that's that's the best I seen of him, so I good luck to him, but tells he didn't even uh, like post a message or anything, just like, on you go mate, see you later. Uh, Wheelstone, Declan, Wheelstone, that's the, you've got no fans boy in it. Yeah, I think so. Uh... <laughs> Aye, listen, the less said about him, uh, the better. The better. Thinking about um, the, the the window overall, I think a lot of people have said already this is probably the best Celtic transfer window that I can remember um, in my my lifetime supporting Celtic. Where, where do you rank it? Do you rank it right up there, Callum? Top, top, top by and by a country mile. That is, and it's got to be. I've I've got a note here of the players that we've signed over the last decade. Some of them are just ridiculous people that have never ever made it. And I mean, I'm talking massive amount of money. Amido Baldi, over two million, nothing. Mm-hmm. Puke, you've got people like Stephen Moyakolo, Derek Berichter. Um, you've just got some right weird. Uh, Chaduri, Efren Juarez, um, Miku, Lasad, Rami Gershon. 
people that's that's nearly over twenty million pounds on signings. That's mm. ridiculous, and not one of them has made it. Um, so you look probably the only other window that's close to this was the twenty ten eleven window, and we got uh, Mulgrew, Joe Ledley. Gary Hooper, Kyle, Mustorovic, Azagiri, Foster, Stokes, that was £10 million spent on them. That's pretty close to this one, though, I feel, because all the players made a massive contribution. Um, they got us some money, Foster £10 million, Hank Hooper for £5 million, Kyle and stuff. Um, but this one ranks up there, and this one's extra special, I feel, because of the age that we've got players at. You look at Barkas, 26, just got ages, keepers don't really hit their prime to into their, into their 30s. Um, you get Turnbull at yeah. 21, a Yeti at 24, Duffy 28 on his prime. I don't know how we've managed to get him on loan still um, at 28. You've got El Yunusi back back again. He's his second season. who's a 16 million um, player that was bought for at 26. And now um, Diego um, at 27. Not one player's over the age at 29 there. So I feel as if they're all a very good age. Um, and it's it's just the best window for me in the last decade. Hmm. Just another uh, question coming in there. We were linked with Harry Wilson today to Liverpool, but I think that's been um, that's been knocked in the head, Declan. I don't think it looks like a, a goer at all, does it? No, nah, it doesn't look like a goer. Listen, he, he looked decent when he was at Bournemouth, but um, I watched him in the cup for Liverpool. And I, I couldn't say I was really that impressed. I think the manager, if I'm going to stick with the three-five-two, and I'll just get Jeremy Frimpel and James Forrest there. So it's not really a position I don't think you'll be looking at to, to strengthen. And obviously, even in the left-hand side, if you're playing a three-five-two, you've now got options of... Laxal, Taylor, Mikey Johnson still to come back. The forgotten man at Celtic. And well, I know say if he's not going up top, so there's kind of six wingers there, six mm. six guys that can play if you will in, in the two wing back positions. And even Alhamid can play there. So um, I, I don't think we need to strengthen that position personally. Mm. And and considering the strength of the squad now, Declan, the position that we're in. No excuses. There's no excuses now. This is a very, very strong Celtic squad to go on. I know we've got a lot of games and it's congested, but it's a strong squad to go on ahead now. Listen, squads win you titles. And um, listen, yesterday wasn't perfect, but we uh, grinded the result. I'm glad we're still winning games. I just hope any guys that's heads maybe been turned with transfer rumours get their head down now. Um, we've obviously got a big game on the 17th, and that can be maybe the game to just kind of really kickstart our season. And get on with it, you know. We've got big games. Hopefully, we can just raise our game uh, against Rangers, Milan, and Aberdeen, uh, and lay down a marker for what we're going to go on to do. Um, I don't think it's clicked yet, but I think it will click. And when it does, this could be quite a frightening team to watch. Um, just touching on earlier as well, even though Taylor's been getting a good bit of stick, Wagsall coming at the club will help improve him as well. You know, I mean, to have an experienced international is coming in the same position as you. Mm-hmm. You know, great for advice, great for learning the game off of it. That'll do him wonders. And the other guy, I think, who has maybe been a wee bit underlooked in this window is Barkas. I mean, as a goalkeeper, mm-hmm. everybody was worried when, when Foster turned us down. Uh, to come in again, looking at... I mean, when did we ever go and sign a player from the Greek League? I know, obviously, we played against Athens, but he's been excellent. And for a goalkeeper, he's very confident. He comes for cross balls. Yeah, there was questions asked about the Ferdinand Varos goal, but um, he's a good goalkeeper. And uh, I think he's a really good buy. And uh, even yesterday, when it was really, really slow, he was the guy that was getting the ball, coming out and collecting it and trying to get his away. So I think he's going to be really uh, key this season too. I, I agree. He's both covered it in, in different ways. I think the, the profile of play that we've signed so this summer has, has been brilliant. That's, I think it's ideal. Players at a good age, coming from a good league of a similar standard to to clubs that clubs on a, a sort of similar level to us, if you like, um, not in the biggest leagues, but big clubs in smaller leagues, if you like, um, and we've spent money like Barkas and Ayeti, as we touched on the Ayeti deal earlier, five million pound on on both of them. I was really really impressed with that. Um, I just want to touch on another deal that was knocked in the head yesterday, but everybody's asking about it in the, the comments here. Robert Snodgrass seemed to come out of nowhere, Callum. Um, I actually don't know where it came from. He, he commented on Lee Griffith's uh, Instagram post yesterday. I Aye. hope that wasn't where it came from. Uh, no, hopefully not. But when it comes to this time of the year, everybody just runs with a story. The slightest thing you do and just somebody jumps on it and boom, it spreads like wildfire. Um, he's just, he's, if he ever wanted to go to Celtic, he's just, he's now too old for that, I feel. 
as you say, look at if you look at this window, nobody's over the age of 28. Duffy's 20 and that's it that we brought in. So Celtic have clearly had a strategy not to go for somebody over the age of 30 um, and bring that in. I think uh, Snodgrass is 33 and he barely plays for West Ham. Um, it, it, it probably wouldn't hurt to have another big Celtic fan in the squad because then they know, but sometimes mm. I feel that can work against you. So um, Regis, he'll be on that. as well, man. Aye, he'll, he'll be on ridiculous. He'll probably be on 60, 70 grand a week to sit on their bench. Um, but nah, it's um, that, that ship sailed. But to be fair, I actually seen one today and I thought this never, ever goes away. Patrick Roberts, I thought, oh my God, people need to let that guy go. Somebody tweeted it there, like, come on, Celtic, hijack Middlesbrough. And I thought, that's where, it, that's where he is now. He's at Middlesbrough. But, Leave him to be. Is he going on loan again? Is he going on yeah. loan? Every, every I think summer, so, I. I, think, I think last summer he signed another new contract at Man City before going Man on City. loan. And it's like, he's just going to, <laughs> he's going to like waste his career just going on loans. And like, he's not going to make it at Man City. He needs to do what Jack Aitchison has done, if you like, and just leave yeah, permanently right. and go well, and try and build a career he's, somewhere. He's now getting to 25, I'm sure. Only 25. Mm-hmm. So he's, he's getting and he's still on loan. So, aye, no fuck on me. Declan, um, I asked Callum to rank it in terms of windows that he's seen. If you could rank it out of 10, would it be? I would say nine and a half. Um, just maybe that wee half mark for not getting a centre back in, but well up there. Um, a perfect 10 would probably need to be us signing Lionel Messi or somebody, but uh, certainly a, a nine and a half. Uh, I, I even said that in Twitter earlier today. I mean, some Celtic fans are delusional. I said if we sign Messi, people would normally never sign Ronaldo. So, I think uh, it's an old... 33, 33, 34. I know, I would break Callum's 28 bracket, know what I mean? Aye, so, he, he wouldn't cut it up here. He'd get slaughtered. No, I mean, he might be able to do it in, uh, <laughs> you know, might be able to do it at the camp now, but could he do it at Ross County on a Wednesday night? I don't think so. So, uh, I put it right up there, you know, right up there, solid nine and a half. And um, in terms of comparing it, I thought the sixteen seventeen window was very good um, because we never really spent massive amounts. But what we did bring in Colo Turi solidified the defence. Musa came in and did the business, and Scott Sinclair. So uh, I put this window past that. But I thought again, like Callum says, two thousand and eleven under two thousand and ten under Lenny, and sixteen uh, seventeen just behind this window. I put this window top. Uh, I'm going to hang about all night for this uh, Laxal announcement but I think we'll be here at half ten I think we might be here a wee while Die. I think so um, that'll do us for tonight like the video comment your own thoughts below please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already we'll be back next week after the international break with build up to the derby on Saturday the 17th of October uh, thank you for watching and we'll see you then cheers